and act. Welcome to Germany. So there's going to be a just under three minute drive that the Seahawks are going to have to either kick a field goal to tie it or Gino's going to have to lead them on a victory drive. And Dave, that's one thing you've said. It's one thing you really want to see out of Gino, lead a last minute drive to win a football game. Gino awaits the shotgun snap, takes it, has time, dumps it over the middle. Medcalf makes the catch. Boy, he's lassoed and dropped just shy of the 35 yard line. Gino throws far side, diving for the ball and making the catch is Noah Fant at the 40-yard line. That's a first down. And we have reached the two-minute warning. 1.56 to play in the game. Gets the shotgun snap. Rush is coming. Gino throws it near side. Fant makes the catch. He's open running down the sidelines, and he's got a first down. Kind of a taste of their own medicine, Dave, is getting that tight end out of the backfield, and he runs wide open down the sideline. Ramsey and Chubb, they're going to blitz again. Gino this time with a lot of time. Throws far side, not back. Gino gets the snap, looks, throws back inside. Ball is caught by Lockett, and he's hammered down, but right at the 30, and that's the line they needed to make. Treadwell is slotted on the left. Gino from the shotgun. Handoff inside to Dallas. And the Rams are there waiting for him, led by Bobby Wagner to make that tackle. Lock continues to move, 105 and counting. Geno Smith out of the shotgun, takes the snap, four-man rush. Steps up, goes a crossing route, inside, it's good, but makes the catch and knock off his feet at the eight-yard line. Three receivers right side, DK Metcalf to the left, with Jalen Ramsey on him. Geno takes the snap, four-man rush, going a half roll, throws back inside, reaching up, making a catch. Seahawks! Are you kidding me? It is DK Metcalf. Ramsey was all over him. DK puts those big mitts up and says, that ball is mine. And the Seahawks take the lead, 26-23. What a dart thrown by Geno Smith. You know, Steve, I didn't realize how badly I wanted this game. Oh, man. I, I mean, this was a great opportunity, and they fully took advantage of it. And the way they want it, with Gino going down the field, now we have that box check, right? Yes. We don't need to talk about that anymore. He can do it. I love you, brother. Me too. Take care of yourself, bro. Man, have yourself a game here, brother. Appreciate you, bro. I love you, dog. Man, I appreciate everything you did for me. I love you, big bro. Come on, man. You already know. Love you, big bro. Love you. Always. You already know. You know that. For life. Hey, I heard money already, bro. You're OG for sure. I'll be in Seattle, so just hit me. I see my number. Say less, bro. I see my number. Oh, cool. How you do, bro? Appreciate you, bro. I love you. You already know. I got you. Appreciate that. That number six. Time for the lead. Interceptions. Rookie year is crazy. Was a blessing. Was a lot of fun today. Got the win. I bought one bag specifically with video games in it. For the younger guys, you know, just embrace the moment. You know, you're playing in a different country. You know, you don't get to these opportunities often, so make sure you have fun with it. That's the main thing that I tell everybody is make sure you keep having fun, enjoy every moment, and everything will just come naturally. Ah, that shit made me laugh. That's <laughs> an hour trip, huh? Um, it's sort of like going to the East Coast. I mean, that's the thing I'm kind of thankful for because we do travel a lot. So I've had, you know, plane rides five, six hours. You know what I mean? So adding just a couple hours to that is just, you know, it's just extending that. So it's just kind of the same thought process, same mentality, still getting those guys, I mean, leaders of water in on the hour, every hour. So just staying on top of that.
It was a huge deal just playing in Germany. Um, you know, my first time actually getting a chance to play overseas. Uh, at the first game in Munich, Germany uh, for the entire NFL. It just came from Walter, right? I'm telling you. Yeah, watch this. Like, let me just show you this beautiful view. But man, such a beautiful place. Way different from the U.S. Germany? That's crazy. My first time here. Yeah. That man, Big A. Yup, yup, yup. Real vet right here. <laughs> Watch out, man. Oh, uh, no, nah, he don't want the camera on, you know. Hey, I ain't even kidding, yeah. This one of my favorite vets around here. Oh, Dustin. Real dude. <laughs> this thing is nice. That's so sweet as hell. Yeah, yeah. That's that's that, that, whole, that, that whole thing. It's an academy. Cause when you pulling up, you don't see what's behind it. You just see the front. Hey, Cool. out, but y'all see this beautiful facility. How are you taking a video of? This for the Seahawks game. What's this for? It's a vlog. What's up? What's up? Uh, it was just an awesome experience just to be there with the guys and uh, to take on just a whole new adventure, you know, in a new place, somewhere we all had pretty much never been before. Uh, my name is Alfonso Davies. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just want to say, um, first to have you guys here, um, you know, good luck on Sunday. You know, um, some of us will be watching and, uh, yeah, man. Missy's put on a show for us. Yeah. And uh, to also get a chance to, uh, you know, really use the Bayern Munich uh, field and kind of get acclimated to what life's like over there for them. Uh, and, you know, with the, with the World Cup and everything going on right now, uh, I think it was extra special because we got up, up close and personal with those players uh, who are now playing. Good talk. Guten Tag, you know what I'm saying? Representing for the home team. Hey, watch out, man. I'm just representing for the home team, man. You feel me? Bayern on three, okay, Bayern, Bayern on three. Here we go. One, two, three. Bayern! For us, man, it was awesome. You know, you felt like an international player for a while. You know, for the Seahawks and for the NFL and football in general, uh, for us just being pioneers uh, to, to allow all the fans over there to see what uh, American football is like and uh, also to get our faces out there and our names out there, it was pretty cool. Coach, watching this year is, I know not a lot of people had high expectations for you guys. You guys have exceeded all the expectations, and it has been a blast to watch you guys come together. All the youth that you have, the great veterans you have. My man Gino, you're killing it, my man. Hey. But it has been a joy to watch you guys. You're writing your history. Don't let no damn body stop you from writing well. He's not talking you about write it. well. You understand what I'm saying, guys? Mm -hmm. Keep doing what you're doing, man, and good luck. Hey, one chance today, man, one chance. That's all we gotta do. Lead our team, man, lead our team. Came all the way to Germany to have some fun. Let's get this dub, let's go, baby. Hey, win on three, one, two, three. Win. I don't think that first half really is who we are. You know, we couldn't get anything going. Empty backfield, Smith takes the shotgun snap. He wants to run it, pulls it down, goes left. Now he stops, and a good job. I think the ball came out. But uh, we really fought back in the second half. So the Buccaneers go to the well trying to trick the Seahawks, and Tariq Woolen picks it off. Now he throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks! A 21-yard strike. Throw down the middle, it's intercepted. Cody Martin with the pick. Gino rolls left, looks, he's gonna throw to the back of the end zone, reaching up, making a catch, good one, he's got it! Gino Smith with a perfect pass. Unfortunately for us, you know, it just took us too long to get going. Not my first time in Europe, but my first time in Germany, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, got a, you know, a little taste of the culture here, and uh, it was amazing, the people treated us well. Uh, they were first class every, everywhere we went, and so um, we really enjoyed our time, enjoyed our stay, and we're thankful for uh, Germany for having us.
it's our first opportunity to make a statement tonight. It's our first opportunity, man. But it doesn't take more than what we've been doing. Do what we always do. Take care of the football. Lead our guys. Score points. Let's go. Let's go. Win on three. One, two, three, win. I can't say it's tough, man, because I've been so blessed, man. Like, honestly, you know, my, my tough times would be a dream of someone else. Competition breeds excellence, man. It brings out the best in everybody. And, uh, you know, being in the NFL, there's competition nonstop. I'll never look at it as something that was too hard for me or really tough because I, throughout that time, I was still, you know, enjoying my life and still in the NFL. Every year, there's a guy shooting for your spot. There's a guy in high school, there's a guy in college training to get that number one spot. For the most part, it was just feeling like there's like a glass ceiling and like you want to break that ceiling. You know, it's like something hovering over you that you just want to you want to break it so that you continue continue to go further. And so for me, I just had to stay patient until I had the opportunity. And all you can do as a competitor is focus on being your best self every single day and then getting better. Hey man, great job all week. Great job all week. Preparation was on point. That's why we play like that. Mm -hmm. We got to keep that up, right? Stay focused on the work. Stay focused on the work. We're going somewhere. Walker with the handoff over his left guard. Now straight up field. Runs into two defenders. Still pushing. Still pushing. They are in. Touchdown, Seahawks. A 14-yard run, his second of the day, and the Seahawks take the lead. I'm Kenneth Walker III, and I play running back for the Seattle Seahawks. Coming into a new team and everything, it's been, at first it was kind of hard, you know, getting the hang of everything with the league and how to carry yourself as a pro professional. But once I got the hang of everything and got my routine in, it got much easier. And talking to the older guys like DK, uh, Quandre, uh, Marquise, a lot of the older guys, they're real helpful. And guys I've seen, uh, I feel like those are the vets and, you know, they know the game well. So talking to those guys and having the rookie, a lot of rookies that came in with me, it makes it easier for me. One of the biggest evolutions for me uh, in my leadership has been just having uh, patience, you know, really understanding uh, what patience and grace can do for you and others. Hey, we know what we got to do today, man. Let's go out there and have fun all day. Let's go, hey. Get it done, together, right? Together, all together, let's go. Hey, one chance to be great, man. That's all we got us today. That's all we get us today. Let's keep leading, man. Let's keep eating. As a leader, um, you know, things aren't going to be perfect. Uh, there's going to be ups and downs, and uh, you're going to get upset sometimes, but um, understanding that there's patience, it takes patience um, in order to gain or to attain anything. And then having grace and understanding that mistakes are going to happen, but you have to learn from them. Championship opportunity right here, championship opportunity. Bring that juice, bring everything you got, man, all together, everybody together, let's go get this win. Another opportunity to be great, man, another opportunity to be special. Lead our guys, lead our troops, man, do what we do. Let's go win on three, one, two, three, win. Smith from the shotgun into the neutral zone, a free play coming up for the Seahawks and now they just blow everything dead. It sure looked like the Chargers jumped in the neutral zone, but Gino looks like he's pleading his case. Close third. Off that from the 63. Wide yard penalty. Third down. That's a terrible call. I just watched the slow-mo replay. You know, that moment uh, between Coach Carroll and, uh, and I was, um, you know, he does that to me a lot. And we have a great relationship, always have. Um, you know, I love Coach Carroll. Uh, he's instilled a lot of confidence in me and, uh, you know, he's helped me revive my career. And that, that was the signal for the 12-yard rip it and, and make it first down. Um. <laughs> and uh, in that moment, you know, he does that to me when, when we score touchdowns early in games or, you know, we rattle off two or three touchdowns in a row. He'll kind of do this and say, hey, you know, just stay calm, stay cool, you know, more work to be done. And in that moment where, you know, we were a little upset and, uh, you know, things were kind of, kind of going off the, the, the tracks there, uh, Coach Carroll just brought it all back. He went, hey, boom, and then here we go. We got, we got back in the huddle, everyone was calm, and we converted a big third down on that drive. And so that's what Coach Carroll does. You know, he coaches us in many ways, and, and that was one of the ways he helped me. You know, reality is, is that, uh, you know, we're going from the hunter to the hunted. You know, people want to play us. And, you know, as a young team, we've got to learn to, you know, be able to go out there and win those games. Um, that's our next step in the evolution as a really young team. You know, we got to understand the moment, capture the moments and take advantage. We got a bunch of uh, young guys on this team, a lot of rookies. And uh, now I'm the older guy where, where, you know, things, roles have been reversed. You know, I used to be the young guy, now I'm the older guy. And so I'm lending my experience to the younger guys and, you know, being very graceful in that and understanding that uh, although, although they're younger than me, uh, they're like my little brothers. You know, I do have little brothers of my own, and so I try to treat the guys the same as I would do my own little brothers. He's been, you know, around the league and 
a lot of people doubted him. And, uh, you know, he's showing people what he's really about this year, and it's, it's cool to see, you know. And when he said uh, he didn't write back, I think that was the coolest thing. <laughs> you know, you get up there in age, and guys start calling you OG. I don't understand that, but, you know. Oh, oh God, yeah. <laughs> what, what is Gino like as a leader? Yeah, he's a great leader. You know, he's always focused and committed, you know, um, in meetings. He's still writing notes down, and he's been in the league for a minute. But to see him still writing notes and, like, soaking it all in, you know, is inspirational. <clears throat> and he's... You know, he's always focused, like that's, like, that's him. He's just a focused guy. He's always wanting to win. Yeah, so we just recently had a uh, Thanksgiving turkey drive. We gave away about 200 turkeys and also uh, had raffles for about uh, seven families where we sponsored their entire Thanksgiving. And the best part about it all was just being among, amongst the fans and amongst the people and getting to see everybody, you know, the, the people who make up the Seattle 12s, getting to meet them and interact and shake hands and take pictures, sign autographs. Uh, I really enjoy being in Seattle and being a part of this community. You know, I feel it's my duty to continue to give back. Um, uh, you know, my mother and my grandmothers, uh, they always instilled that in me. Uh, to always be a part of your community and try and make it better. And so uh, that's, that's the only goal is to try and help out any way that I can and uh, just be a part of the community and, and allow them to see us outside of the helmets and the shoulder pads and on game day. It's, it's like Spider-Man's uncle told him <laughs> with, with great responsibility. Uh, I'm sorry, with, with great, uh, what did you say? With great, with great power? It's like, yeah, it's like Spider-Man's uncle when he told him with great power comes great responsibility. and. Um, you know, I really take that seriously. Uh, I, I understand that uh, we play a game and, you know, people look up to us, but I don't want them to idolize us. You know, I want them to see that we're a part of the community and we're with them. Check them out. Too sweet. We got the logo on the front. So I have the uh, Seven Sunday Heroes Foundation, which I started my rookie year in uh, New York. And uh, it's also been partnered with the Extended Hands Foundation, which is my mother's foundation um, that she had started uh, years before I made it to the NFL. And uh, my mom and my grandmothers have been giving back to the community down in South Florida for over 20 to 30 plus years. Seven Sunday Heroes, my cause, my cleats, uh, for, for the community, uh, just with them, my foundation. Um, you know, we're always lending a hand and, and just being there for the community. So, thank you, Sean, making me look good. These are sweet. Um, we'll donate these for the foundation as well. And, uh, you know, it's really been a trickle down effect with me um, now that I've gone into different communities. And uh, I wanted to continue that and continue to lend a hand, uh, as Extended Hands is, uh, says. And then, Seven Sunday Heroes is just, you know, your everyday hero. Uh, and so we're just here to, to be a help and to try and help out as much as we can and just lend our hand and, and our, our ear and our hearts and uh, just try and make it a better place for other people. Le Bonner, this is where I, after my junior year, going into my senior year, I had, um, blood clots in both my lungs, a blood clot in both my lungs. So I had to stay in the hospital, I believe like four nights. And um, as I was in the hospital, you know, I just, it was like a moment where I was like, don't take anything for granted, you know, cause it all can get thrown away at any time. So, you know, you had a lot of kids there, you know, they was battling cancer, cancer and illness. But every time I would see them like in the hallway or like, Anywhere, they was always so positive and smiling, you know, and that's so, so inspirational to see the kids going through so much, but like always have a positive attitude and it's like inspiring. Gonna hand to Walker, he's got an alley right up the middle, he breaks free, he's across the 40, stutter steps and runs out of bounds at the 50, okay, that's how you get well in a hurry. You hand the ball to that youngster and say, here, find an open area to run, and boy, he sure did. And this is, this is my dog, Lil Dev. Um, so we play high school ball together. Um, he's like my little brother, you know. We stay together all the time. That's the person I used to always hang out with after practice or whatever, just for anything. And um, um, and the UVA, it was a UVA shooting um, a few weeks ago, and he was involved in it, and he ended up getting killed. Um, and um, I'm sorry. It's, Yeah, um, so 
dev, dev was wide receiver, and I was running back. And um, yeah, he was just super cold. Like Dev, I remember I, I used to have his name saved on my phone as future NFL star. We used to always talk about, we used to always talk about going to the league together, and we always looked up to Odell and Jarvis Landry because they was like best friends, and you know we wanted to be like that. And we always compete in everything. In a good way though, like not in a bad way. So we used to compete in everything. Like I used to be like, oh bro, I bet my GPA is gonna be higher than yours by the end of the in the semester, all that. And um, you know, that was just like my little brother, you know. He didn't know how to drive at one point and I let him drive my car <laughs> and just small stuff like that. Dev went through a lot. And his his pops <clears throat> his his pops had cancer and and um when we were both in high school, I believe it was Dev's junior year, and um, his pops ended up passing away. And Dev ended up playing a game that week, and he still like fought through and everything, because he knew his pops would want him to. And I don't know, Dev was just inspirational to everybody around him. And you know, if you talk to somebody that knows Dev, um, you'll understand, because like, bro is just super funny and always energetic. And it's just great to have somebody like him around. And, um, I just want to say, like, cherish the people that you love because you never know when it's the last time you'll see. We first met, I believe we first met on the field, and he had came up to varsity. Um, and I'm like, at first, at first, man, I didn't talk because he was so, like, he was always doing his own thing, like, just being energetic. And I'm like, bro, who's this kid that's always, like, playing around? You know what I'm saying? And then, like, I got to talk to him and, like, get to know him. Because at first, um, I mean, like, like I said, we didn't talk much. But he was always energetic, like, always play fighting with somebody. And then I got to talk to him and, like, see him play on the field. I'm like, oh, he good. Like, he's like that. And then me and him start talking. And he was always talking about me, like, in a good way. So then we start talking on the field. And then uh, we start hanging out after, like, practice and stuff like that. And then that's when I ended up, man, being real close. It was like one of my best friends.